Hello, Tenno, and welcome back to another episode of Warframe Tips and Tricks. I'm your host, Reed McNo, a.k.a. Father McFeely. And today we're going to talk all about the Tusk Thumpers and the Karudo. Now, make sure to check the description below this video. I'm going to include time stamps if you want to skip ahead at any point to get to the demonstration or, you know, the build suggestions or anything else. Uh, so, real quick... Uh, the Tusk Dumpers were introduced with this update, remastering the Plains of Eidolon. They are the only means for getting the new Grenier pneumatic sparring weapon, Karudo. Uh, you can only obtain the Karudo from either the Tusk Bull, um, I'm sorry, Tusk Thumper Bull or the Tusk Dumper Doma. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over to my codex real quick, and we're going to go over details on these particular enemies. Now, each one of them in order to put into the codex, you do need to scan them three times. Uh, just a heads up, when they spawn in the codex, it's going to be a little loud. These are the three variants. The basic thumper can be encountered anytime outside of bounties. Uh, the bull and the doma are only encountered in bounties level 30 or higher. Uh, I believe the basic thumper can spawn in any bounty up to level 30. Beyond that, it will not spawn that I have seen. It might. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me clear up some common misconceptions here. Some people say you can encounter them if you are riding around on your K-Drive. Uh, you cannot. If you are not on the ground, they will not detect you and they will not come up out the ground. You cannot see them from the sky and they will not detect you in Arcwing either. You will need to be on the ground, on foot, maneuvering. I believe their detection range is between 30 meters and 100 meters. Once they detect your movement, you'll hear them coming up out the ground and you may even see them coming up. Uh, so real quick, we'll go over their drops and details about them and then I will do a demonstration shortly. Alright, this is the basic Tusk Thumper, as you can see, Alloy Armor 100 and Clone Flesh 3000. Now, the Clone Flesh is actually part that gets me confused, or gets a lot of people confused, because it's a heavy armored unit, you would figure it would be armor rather than flesh. But this is simply because of its weakness. The main body, these pistons, the pneumatics, Everything about this, except for its one weak spot, is immune to damage. As you can see, the knee guards get reflective. Uh, you're going to shoot those, and they're going to come off. As we circle around here, you will see a green light right here. That green light is actually the control unit for the hydraulics on the legs. Each leg accounts for 25% of the thumper's health. As you can see, these contraptions here and here, those are guns and cannons. I think a three-barrel turret here and a high-powered cannon here. Mid-range, long-range. And, of course, its behavior is as such. In close range, it may charge you, it may jump over you, or it may charge up this here. You'll see its legs branch out at about a 45-degree angle. Um, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. It's sitting at a 90-degree angle. That's more than 90 degrees. Anyway, it, its legs will branch out, and when it branches out, it's going to brace itself for the force of this pneumatic pressure plate. It's going to slam the ground and create a shockwave force uh, radiating outward, I think, about 30 meters. I haven't actually accurately measured that, but uh, we're going to talk about that in detail in a moment. Uh, so its behavior in close range is slam, jump, or charge. These cannons and guns here, when this guard comes back, the guns can come out. If those guards are back, you can shoot the guns. And if you've dealt enough damage, um, those guns will start smoking. As long as they're smoking, they're out of commission, but they are self-repairing, they will reappear shortly. So every now and again, if you want to make sure it's not using the guns and you're forcing it to use these pressure plates here, um, you're going to want to continue shooting the guns. Um, once you knock these guards off, you shoot the control units until they disappear. That leg will be done, it'll start smoking, you move on to the next one. Now this is where it gets really difficult when you get down to one and two legs remaining. 
as again that accounts for 25 percent of its health its behavior will get to be a little more erratic at that point uh, so what you're going to want to do is shoot the cannons out get close to it it will either charge past you or it will try to use its pneumatic pressure plate and create the shock waves so if you see it brace to do the shock waves you're going to vault jump as high as you can in the air maneuver yourself in an angle to where you see that leg and while it is hitting that ground for the five to six strikes you're going to shoot its weak spot it will not be able to move out the way and that is the point where you can be most accurate so i'm going to go into details about suggested weapons for this type of creature but first we're going to go ahead and look at the details here again because of its weak spot it is quite weak uh, those control units are basically like glass and circuitry so it's going to be rather weak to impact uh, so that is why it is listed as cloned flesh it is especially weak to corrosive it's got an additional weakness to heat and slash all right and pulling up the next one Now this is the Tusk Bull. As you see, its stats on cloned flesh is a little bit higher, meaning it's a little bit more durable. As well, if you see its drops, everything it drops is exactly the same between all three, with the exception of the Karuto blueprint. This blueprint with the bull has a 2.5% drop chance. And we'll talk more about the Karuto shortly. Now into the dump. Now visually you'll see this one is actually a little bit bigger than the others and it is definitely more durable. Again it drops the Karuto blueprint as well as all the same mods and it'll even drop resources for the Plains of Eidolon, whether it be gems, fish, etc. Uh, the Karuto blueprint has a 5% chance to drop from this one. Okay, now that we've gone over the details, we're going to talk about weapon choices. Now, because of its weakness and its behavior, hitting that point is going to be especially difficult with precision weapons such as bows and sniper rifles and single fire weapons. So my suggestion is actually scattershot weapons, area of effect weapons, or, you know, faster weapons. Uh, this can be the Soma, it can be the... Uh, plasmor I think it is uh, I'm not familiar with the plasmor it's the one you see everybody firing creates that big oval blue energy that explodes on impact um, sorry I don't know exactly what that one is at the moment because I've never actually used it anyway uh, my actual suggestion for this is actually going to be the Quartok here this is really good so I'm going to pull up my details. As you see with this build, I have two formas. You don't actually need that. Uh, really what you're going to need is two status mods such as Malignant Force and High Voltage to create your uh, Corrosive. As you can see, this is actually a balanced impact and slash. Uh, it is slightly resistant to impact damage, so even though it will likely hit that impact when you shoot that control unit, it's not going to stifle that much of the damage. Additionally, you're running split chamber and vigilante armaments, increasing your critical hit chance, your status chance, and giving you 150% multi-shot, which means this weapon, which fires four rounds per shot, will actually fire between 8 and 12 rounds per shot with a 47.5% critical hit chance per pellet at a 6.4 multiplier. So that right there is pretty good. You're more likely to hit with a 95.2 status chance with this particular build. Um, you're more likely to hit with that corrosive and possibly the slash, but more than likely you're going to see the impact there. All right. Uh, as far as frames, I don't have any particular recommendation. I'm personally fond of using Goldilocks here. <laughs> Mostly with this particular build, uh, Energy Siphon giving me increased regeneration and energy, Potagium for longer aim glide, Vitality and redirection for a bit more health and shields. Now I'm going to tell you this particular build, you have to stay on the move. Um, it is fairly squishy so it's going to be a little bit difficult 
um, especially if you wind up going up against the level 60 Bull or Doma, but at least the level 30 to 45 is not so bad. Really, it's just a lot of dodging, and she's a little harder to hit with what we're using here. As you can see, I've got Narrow-Minded for Duration, Streamline for Efficiency, Intensify for the Ability Strength, further with Transient Fortitude rank 7, and Continuity for the Duration. Uh, first ability, Hall of Mirrors, 17.5 energy cost with a 15.25 duration and 34% boost. On the third ability, we have Eclipse, same uh, cost and duration, and if you are standing in the light, it boosts your damage by 340%. This is a particular reason I like running this in addition to a Quartok. Your clones will do additional damage as well as you amplifying damage. If you're in the shade, they won't be able to do as much damage to you either. So, it's a win-win. Now, without further ado, we're going to go out onto the planes and see if we can track one down. Uh, I'm going to continue this recording once I locate one, so stay tuned. Alright guys, as you can hear, we have some movement, which means we have one nearby. Whoop. Now, if you, if you gain sight of it, do not lose sight, especially if you're waiting for the rest of your team to get here. Uh, because it will burrow underground, and if it does so, it will not come back up if you locate it. Alright, so this here is a bull. So first things first, I'm going to blow out its cannons. Alright, as you can see, it's cannon smoking, which means it's out of commission. Okay. And now we're going to aim glide, shoot, shoot, shoot. Alright, as you see, it's getting out of the way. Cannons are back up. It doesn't take long for its cannons to restore itself. So, like I said, get up close to it, prevent those guns from activating. Try and entice it into using its. Um... No. I didn't realize its gun was firing that close. Normally it's mid range. Keep that gun out of condition. Oop! It's trying to run me over. Alright, so I took out one of its legs already. Now you see why I'm using the scatter, so you can miss it. I'm more than likely doing some damage. Uh, just a heads up, might just like most bosses, it's immune to enemy, or I'm sorry, uh, Warframe abilities. So using, like, Nova's abilities, Limbo's, etc. It's not really gonna work. Ah, my hand got shaky there. <laughs> I believe we're down to one leg, which means it's going to be a little bit harder. Yeah, that looks like a leg. Alright. Now at this point, we're going to want to lure it into... Yeah, your cannon's staying out. Try and take it out of the gun as well. There we go. There we go. Almost made it. Alright. Uh, let's keep these guns at home. Oops. See, yeah, like I said, it is really quick to respawn that. There we go. And it's gonna keep that wounded leg out of my reach. Unless I lure it into no cannons. Lure it into slamming. There we go. Goodbye. Alright. Now, heads up, it does explode. Alright, so that was fighting the bull. Um, so as you can see, you just 
you shoot the plates off, shoot the control units, keep focus on those guns, especially that cannon, because if the cannon hits you, it's going to do some damage. Um, at this level, it wasn't much of a concern, even though I'm using a fairly squishy frame. And as you saw, it doesn't really do much damage in general, but defeating it is kind of a headache at times. But, as long as you maneuver around it, you're patient with it, and you have a decent weapon. Again, I do recommend scatter shots. Uh, I do recommend area of effect. Do not, unless you are a, like a pro sniper, do not use a bow, do not use a sniper rifle, do not use a single fire weapon. Uh, it is really difficult to hit this guy. You're going to wind up more aggravated and wasting more time. <laughs> So I hope this guide has helped as far as fighting them. Now I promised we'd go over the Karudo, so first things first, I'm going to pick this back up over at the Simulacrum so I can go over details on the Karudo. Alright, welcome back guys. Uh, as you can see, I've currently got the Karudo equipped, so I wanted to go over this with you. The Grenier Pneumatic Sparring Weapons that you get from the Bull and Doma. Uh, at first, my personal opinion, I am not a fan of the default polarity for the stance. Um, I will demonstrate why. So we're going to go over here to the arsenal, and we'll go to upgrade. All right, so the default stance, the polarity is Naramon, which is Brutal Tide, which is roundhouse uh, attacks and leaping fists. These are the combos for them. Right, so this is, I've got my melee weapon set to my mouse button 5. Alright, so I've got some enemies spawned out here and we're going to go take a few swings at them. Well, I thought I'd spawn them. Hold on. My bad. Alright, as you, oh. Hold on, I don't know why they were spawned. Okay, now we can go. Alright, these guys are a little bit durable, and I've only set it to level 30, it's good. Okay. Alright, so this is the combos for this particular stance, and I'll point out why I'm not a fan of it. One press, two sweeping attacks, and as you can see I pushed past my target. Two presses. Again, push past my target, and that was five movements for two presses. Full combo. Okay, never mind that. Alright, so, full combo now. Uh, I'm not triggering for stuff. Ah, I hate that. Alright, so, I wish you could turn off finishers, but whatever. As you can see, the reach for each attack is a little bit off. Some extend farther out for the body than others. In addition to, I mean, again, pressing one time, you can easily sweep past your melee target. So as you do that, you're going to have to rotate back around so you can actually continue the combo. So, one attack. And that one completely missed, even though I was looking right at him. And then that kick hit, but the following two hits did not. So that is why I don't like this stance. So, of course, my first forma went into changing the polarity. I changed the polarity to Unairu. And this is currently what I'm setting up on here. So let me put my pressure point back on, and I've also added a little bit of reach. Alright, so we'll go over to these guys and have a little bit of fun. You know what, let me actually turn on the AI here. Sorry, I've never actually done a demonstration like this, so I'm not very great at it. But I'm wanting to convey a point here. Alright. There we go. They are active, so let's go for a little bit of fun. Alright, 
say it's a whole lot easier to control your attacks when you are able to stop on a dime. Although I do like that vaulting kick. So again, one press, two presses, and then full combo. It's easier to stop, you're less likely to push past your opponent, and it's just easier to control. And then you can never forget about channel. But seriously, who doesn't enjoy kicking their enemies in half? But, okay, so that's my feedback on it. Um, I don't really think Reach actually helped at all with this. Of course, because it's a melee weapon that's close to the body. Uh, I was just testing that out for gits and shiggles here. <laughs> now, uh, a little bit about this. Um, it's default stats. Let's see. Okay, as you can see, its status chance is only 9%, whereas its critical chance is significantly higher. Uh, it is a little bit elevated here because I've got other mods that amplify um, weapon damage. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, weapon critical chances. So this is a little bit different than its base stats. Um, so, of course, this is a critical build. Now, in order to compensate for the lower status chance, if you go for a um, combo build, you can run Weeping Wounds for additional combo stat or status chance per combo multiplier. And I believe the way that works is if you get your combo multiplier up 2.5, that would be 45% times 2.5. Uh, so that would be 90... Well, it'd be over 100% boost if you had a 2.5 combo multiplier. Um, in addition to, I recommend running uh, status mods, which if you want to put all four status mods here, which is Virulent Scourge, Voltaic Strike, Mol uh, Molten Impact, and uh, I'm drawing a blank on the last one. Uh, vicious Frost, that's it. Volcanic Edge and v Vicious Frost. If you throw all of those on here, you go up to 30.6%. Then you add... Oh, of course I can't do this here. <laughs> I'm still working on this weapon. I'm still getting the hang of it. Uh, I do want to see something come out of this, especially as challenging as it is. Again, Bull is a 2.5% chance to drop this, and the Doma is a 5% chance. So farming, it's going to be a little bit challenging. You can solo it. You can do it in a group. Now, it, um, let me actually go ahead and head back to the uh, ship to close up this video, and I'll give you some final pointers before we go. All right, so as we're closing up, we're going to recap some details. One, they will not spawn if you are not on foot. If you're on K-Drive and Arcwing, they will not detect you. They are buried underground. They are not visible from the air, nor the spots they spawn from, unlike creatures like the ghouls. Uh, two, uh, precision weapons, unless you are, like, really good with precision weapons or you are patient and you know, waiting for those openings, I recommend area of effect weapons, scatter shot weapons, and um, even automatic weapons like the Soma. Uh, Soma would be really good in this case if you can get it to do corrosive damage as well as slash. Um, now, talking about the Kurudo, its drop chances are low, its base polarity, on my opinion, is really crappy. Uh, I have seen other people form other weapons so that they can run the Oniru stance and go with Grim Fury instead of Brutal Tide because it offers more control and less randomness in the attacks. I personally do not like using the melee strikes. Um, uh, 
let me re uh, rephrase that. I personally do not like a combo where if I press once, it pushes me past the target for one and two extends the rate uh, extends the duration of the action by performing another unwanted action i would prefer that separate uh that action be part of a separate input maybe continuing the combo in a different manner but having two and then following it up with three actions with two simple button presses is really bad to me because you have to maintain rapid control Re, uh, if you push past your target you have to whip back around in order to get to them in addition to that as you saw the roundhouse kick after that that first part the uh, first two movements there's the roundhouse kick followed by the two close range attacks they tend to miss the targets unless they are right up on you so that's a little bit disappointing to me so I do like pretty much being able to stop on a dime, relocate my target, and continue onward. Uh, this leaves you less open to counterattacks. You're not standing there while you're finishing the combo taking damage. Uh, it's just a lot easier for you. Okay, uh, as you also saw in this video demonstration, Mirage is really good for this because of her amplified damage as well as her ability to produce those clones. It makes it a little bit more difficult if it's firing that gun to hit you, but as long as you maintain focus and keep those guns out of commission, it's one, it's not going to do much damage, and two, it, it just forces it to uh, either evade you or use that pneumatic pounder. Um, so again, uh, when fighting the thumpers, keep a close proximity, eliminate those guns as often as possible, and when it goes to use the pneumatic pound, uh, I'm sorry, pneumatic pounder, I'm getting a bit tongue-tied here, uh, it leaves it open for that critical strike. That is actually where you're going to want to focus on getting that last leg or two. Uh, as long as you can land some good shots on it. And as you saw, the Quartok acts pretty good against that point when you're aiming straight at it, but it also does some damage even if it's off to the side, uh, as long as you're in the general area of it. Uh, I do hope this video has helped. Uh, again, I thank all of my viewers for checking back and sticking with us. I'm trying to find more time to make more videos. I really do want to release good content. I also want to be informative. I don't want to rush videos in order to just get something out there for people. Uh, again, um, I'm going to try and find the time to make more videos that are helpful to people. I know one of the next videos I plan on doing is going to be conservation on Cetus talking about the types of creatures, the floofs, and so on. So uh, keep an eye out for that. If you haven't checked out my other videos, feel free to do so. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.